The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. It is Thursday, March 21st, and this is a holiday to for most people around the world in sports. They love this day. Uh, sometimes it's big on free agency, and I'm sure there's some big free agency news not really going on right now at the Star. Maybe a few things will happen here and there, but uh, March Madness obviously is going around. You see a lot of people trying to you know, fill out brackets and, and watch games and, you know, probably watch their first basketball game of the whole season today. But that's okay. That's what the fun of it. But that's not uh, what you guys are want to talk about. You want to talk about the Cowboys, which I understand. Uh, unfortunately, there's just not, there hasn't been a lot happening here in these last few days. But still, we're always looking forward, looking, uh, looking towards the draft, off season. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions, so we're going to get to it. Uh, we've had a couple guys been holding for a while. I apologize for that, so let's get it going here. Paul is in Vancouver, ca- Canada. What's up, man, Paul? Hey, Nick, how are you? Man? I'm good. Thank you for holding as long as you did. I appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. Hope you and Chris are doing well. We're good. What, what's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of, like, I value your opinion a lot, so I was wondering what your thoughts are on with the Cowboys and free agency, like, like historically. Because um, you remember when we went back years ago, when the first day of free agency, we signed Anthony Henry, Marco Rivera, and Jason Ferguson. I think that was a very mixed bag. Like Anthony Henry was a hit, Ferguson was up and down, and Rivera wasn't the same guy he was in Green Bay. And then more recently, like guys like uh, Cedric Thornton, we forget about him, and Nolan Carroll. I think he played two games for us. Like those guys kind of sent us, sent us back because we had Dak on a on his rookie deal, and those guys just kind of, you know, affect your cap negatively. So I don't think free agency has been good to us. I'm not saying don't sign anybody, but I'm okay with the Cowboys being cautious and not sacrificing their ability to sign core guys. So yeah. I'm kind of okay with what they're doing. I just wanted to get your thoughts on historically with free agency, like how it, right. what you think of it. Um, I was hoping you can also touch on Sam Williams because I'm a big fan of his. I think he's going to have a big year. And I do think he's a better run player than – uh, Fowler and Armstrong. I wanted to see what you thought about that. And I really enjoy when you have Darren Woodson on. Um, Me but too. One player we, uh, yeah, he's he's the best. So <laughs> one when we talk about like our older players in dynasty years, we never really talk about Kevin Smith. And you think about all the guys he had to match up with back in the day. Like I'm kind of wondering why if you had any stories on him and why he's never talked about. Like he, I think he was one of our better players back in the day. And yeah. All right. Yeah, I just want to thank you for taking my call. And thanks. We got other calls to get to, and hope to talk to you again soon. Thank All right, you. thanks, Paul. Appreciate that. Uh, a lot of good stuff there. We'll get to it. Uh, free agency, um, historically, you know, it hasn't been hasn't been great. Um, there's been some, you know, when I think of the best ones, I think of like getting um, Leroy Glover. You know, like two weeks into free agency when the price tag kind of went down, and and I think they remember that too, and that's kind of what they're always hoping for is. You know, you get that steal uh, once once the market is is drying up a little bit, and you know it's it's a game of musical chairs for these veterans. And you're sitting there, you don't want to be without a chair, you know. So, and I understand, I I, I totally I, I get that. I think the biggest issue for me though is just like you you're not getting your own guys resigned. I think everyone sort of understands that they're not going to go out and set markets and 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 get these guys, but it's it's not being able to just keep your own core players and watching them go out the door and watching them go to Washington. I mean, that's really what's happening. Uh a team that that is, you know, they're 30 I think the Cowboys beat them by 28 and 35. Uh you know, so four to five touchdowns better than Washington last season, but it looks like with Dan Quinn and then some of the guys that they're that they're bringing in that they're gonna you know kind of close the gap a little bit, see what happens at quarterback for them too. They're gonna have a you know new quarterback and he's gonna be a rookie and you know we'll we'll see how how good that is. But but um, that's kind of been the key there uh, with with free agency this year, just not keep keeping your own guys. Sam Williams, 
yeah, he's going to have to to replace uh, either you know Fowler or Armstrong or both. I mean, he he's going to get a lot more playing time. Uh, he's got to be disciplined. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, he doesn't get a lot of snaps, and when he, he's out there, it seems there's way too many penalties for for the amount of snaps he gets. That's on special teams. Now he's going to be playing a little bit more on defense. He's got to be disciplined with penalties. Got to be disciplined in run support. Uh, we know he can you know get off to the quarterback and make plays. He's just got to be smart. You know you. You know, there's guys like that. Randy Gregory was sort of that way. You know, when he was on, he was on. But he also had some issues sometimes with penalties. He'd hit late. He'd retaliate, things like that. He's got to be, you know, mature as a, as, a, as a player as well. And then as for Kevin Smith, you know, I didn't cover him a, a lot. Um, but, yeah, he was one of those guys that was a little overshadowed. And when he got hurt, you know, his injury in 1995 really opened the door even more for them to, to sign Deion Sanders that year and, you know, he came back from an Achilles injury, and him and Dion did play some together, but not, not not a lot. But, yeah, he was a really good cover corner, solid player. Just first-round draft pick, just solid guy, and, uh, and, and yeah, I think underrated, too. They called him Pup, Kevin Smith. All right, let's go to Michael. He's in Colton, California. Hey, what's going on, Nick? Hey, shout-out to you. And, uh, and and the producer Chris back there and the whole uh, Cowboy Storyline uh, uh, show. Hey, uh, the other day, right, ever since the Cowboys lost uh, in the playoffs, first round, whatever, I have not listened to anything, man. I was devastated. I was, I was in my feelings. I'm not even going <laughs> to lie. But um, I turned it on, and, man, it was awesome. I, I heard uh, I heard your, your all-storyline team, and I made an honorable mention, yeah. man. I was smiling from ear to ear, so I just want to say thank you for that, man. That yeah. was awesome. And, uh, man, I, I, I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say we love your show. But, I appreciate um, that. I appreciate. It. I think yes. you actually made a third team. I think you're on 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 the group. I th- if I had. To, oh, okay. It hey, doesn't matter. It don't fact, matter. Yeah, my yeah. name was mentioned. Think, hey, you know what? I, I want to say the captain Rob. Well deserved, man. That dude's awesome. I, I love to hear his uh, his takes and all that when he talks, man. But like I said, man, just thank you to the to you and the show, man. You got an awesome show going appreciate on. It. But, yes, sir. I I told my wife about. It. I thought she was going to be happy for me. She said you could sit on the phone. Waiting to talk to the Cowboys show, but you can't call for your doctor's appointment. Uh-huh. Oh, never mind. Oh, that, yeah, that yeah. The conversation. No, no, no. But, uh, I've, I've been there. I know how that goes. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Be careful hey, uh, when you do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. But hey, uh, I just I, I want to ask you. Um, you know, what do you think? Um, it's nothing. Nothing. Uh, we we've been down this road before with the whole Dak Prescott conversation, but not even on that aspect. Just as far as business. Um, do you think if one of these quarterbacks, um, I know it's not going to be Caleb Williams or, or, or uh, the, the guy from uh, Jaden Daniels or, or nothing like that, but if somebody slips, like, and I, I think Michael Penix is a lot better than, than people are giving him credit for, but do you think there's a chance that the Cowboys uh, might, might uh, take one of those quarterbacks if they were to slip or anything? Uh, just for the, like I said, the business aspect of sure. the Prescott contract not being done. and Yeah, I you have to do that. I mean, you have to think that way. Um, um, that's. I don't think that's out of the question. To that's a good question. And I, I, Michael, thanks. Thanks for the call. Um, you know, unless you had another. Did you have another call, uh, point? No, that's it. Thank you, okay. sir. God bless you and the whole team over there, man. You guys are awesome. All right, thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Uh, no, I. Uh, you know, that's that's interesting. You know, and you also got to remember Mike McCarthy in Green Bay. This is kind of what they did. You know, he was there when they drafted Aaron Rodgers, I believe. I think he was there in 05. Um, I think he was there, and then he took over in 06 as the head coach. But definitely knows the story of Aaron Rodgers being drafted when Brett Favre was still on the team. And then Aaron Rodgers has the career he has, and they go and they draft Jordan Love. You know, and and while Aaron Rodgers is there, it doesn't sit well. It doesn't sit well with the first round, with, with the starting quarterback who's sitting here going, why don't you draft somebody that'll help me today and not someone, you know, I have to look over my shoulder at. Um, I don't think it would happen in the first round. This is a team that doesn't have a lot of picks this year, and they need these picks to hit so they can play well and compete. And it's this is a tough one because, you know, you've got coaches, uh, quarterbacks that on one-year deals, they're like, let's let's win this thing. You know, let, let's give me some guys that can help. And then you got ownership that's thinking maybe a little bit more big picture. So I'll say this. If a quarterback like that is falling, 
The Cowboys will be interested, maybe not to draft them themselves, but we'll see if anybody else wants to do that. They've done that. They've showed that in the past uh, a couple of times, 2004, I believe, uh, 2007 maybe, uh, when when there was a quarterback sitting there and the Cowboys will say, if you want them, trade us, you know, this or this, and you can have them, and, and we'll, you know, and they get a little bit more out of it. So they may be more of a player in that regard than actually drafting themselves. But I will say, I think they would be. I mean, you could you could say you you draft a quarterback, but you know, if if you're drafting a quarterback who's falling, you you've got that in Trey Lance. You you already have that guy, and so that's that's probably why you won't see a lot of quarterbacks or any quarterbacks really being taken because the jury's still. I mean, if this guy's falling to 21, I mean, how about the guy that went three overall, right? I mean, Trey Lance. So. I think they feel like they have that guy in place if it's time to go that route. All right, Michael in Bowling Green, Kentucky is next. Hey, man, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Uh, pretty good. I'm on vacation this week. So. Good. Um, I, I've been I've been thinking about some stuff, of, you know, the Cowboys been doing, listening to the shows, listening to the people. And, I mean, I can, I'm thinking, you know, we're we're still loaded. I mean, yeah, we lost some guys, but, you know, maybe not, you know, terrible, the ones we lost. Right. But, uh, I mean, the Cowboys are still pretty loaded. And, you know, they're going to – they're are they going to get some comp picks for this for this draft from players they've lost, or would that be for the next year? They, they already have got those. They've got two – I think they got a fifth and a sixth, one for Dalton Schultz. And one for Connor McGovern. So they they oh. they did receive two, fifth and a sixth. And next year, oh. they'll probably get the maximum you can get is four. So oh. they have a good chance to get four next year just by all the guys that they've lost. It depends on what they do this year, though. Well, I mean, I think I think with a good, I mean, I really really want that Powers dude. I yeah. mean, I hope they get him in the first round. Yeah. But uh, I mean. I mean, I think with a good draft, I mean, like I said, they're already loaded. They they're still going to be competitive this year. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm not panicking like you know. I know a lot of people are, but another thing I thought about was people. You know, people are like, "Oh, Dak's got to go." Well, you know, it's, it's it's almost 20 years since we haven't had Dak Prescott or Tony Romo's quarterback, two franchise quarterbacks. So, you know, a lot of people don't even remember or don't even think about having a not not having a franchise quarterback. So, I mean, I think if if they if the Cowboys went, "Hey, we're going to get rid of Dak. We're going to put him out there on the and it would be a frenzy right. of people of teams trying to get Dak. It would be crazy. Yeah, and then if they got rid of McCarthy. McCarthy would probably be out of a job a couple of days. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't think people think realize what they're asking for. Right? No, I, or what what they got. They just yeah they they just look at Dak after eight years and think, well, he hasn't gotten the job done, so he can't. You know, it's yeah. not about that he won't or or he just he they feel like he can't, and I don't believe that way. I I, I yeah. don't because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it won't happen. But I am a believer that he needs some help, and it's not easy to do when he has a contract that takes up a lot of the salary cap, and you have other players as well. That's what makes yeah. this this tough. You want to have yeah. great players. These great players we put all over the wall here that you can't really see, but but I mean, you know, we we this is on the marquee. This is this is what this team is about. It's it's superstars. Look at the jerseys. Look look you know in the stands. This is what it is. But those guys re- require big contracts. And yeah. when when the you know, and I I just uh, Chris Beam just put something. In the, I'm not. This isn't Chris saying this. This is this is kind of what people have said, kind of in the building. You've got some players, you know, that are in B B plus type players getting A plus money. That's that's the reality. And so yeah. what what do you think? What do you think Micah Parsons thinks about Dorrance Armstrong getting 15 million a year? Like <laughs> cool, 30. Yeah, yeah. Help 30, him. 45. I mean. Micah Parsons is, you know, I think twice the player that Dorrance Armstrong is, and that's the Dorrance Armstrong got overpaid. Yeah, of course, but of of course he did. That that's the point. That, that's that's that. Yes, that means that means they're, this guy's going to get overpaid. Er, 
Yeah. That's not even a word, <laughs> but it should be. It should, should be. be. All right, Michael. Appreciate All the right, call. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, let me get a couple of these text questions in here. Um, this is Brian in Carson City, Nevada. Uh, he says, hey, Nick, I'm a first-time texter. What do you think, Chris? First-time texter? Here we go. No. Nope. Probably on the phone. That's what happens when you hang up, call it rings again. He's on the phone. But I still think that's worthy of it. Here we go. All right. Here go. Oh, thanks. We won't know. Hey, this is a question. We won't know this. We won't know where this season will go until after the draft. There's a lot of offseason to go. Here's a fun question. Without injuries, tell me what three former Cowboy players who retired early might have made it to the Hall of Fame. He, his examples are Sean Lee, Dat Wynn, if they had played long enough. I don't know about Dat Wynn. I don't, I don't think he ever made it to a, a Pro Bowl. Sean Lee, I mean, yeah, Sean Lee, injuries for him – Without a doubt, I mean that 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 kind of that hurt him big time because um, he he was that good of a player. Uh, he did everything that you wanted a player to to be. I mean he 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 studied the game inside and out. He did that from the moment he got here. Um, he, he played with instincts and that helped him. You know he wasn't the best athlete in the world, but you wouldn't know that you know when he was healthy because he is healthy. He played with his instincts. He was so quick to the ball. Um, yeah, I, I put him in that category for sure. Um, other guys, injury wise, that that kind of hurt them. Um, I mean, this is somewhat of a stretch, but you could say, I'll say this: I'd like to see Tony Romo play three or four more years. You know, and that's nothing against Dak. I just we said this the other day. I, I think that Tony had really figured it out. I think he'd kind of figured out how to how to do this, what defenses were trying to do to him, and how he could beat them. And his body was failing him all at the same time. I think I think he could have been that guy that, that you know, he, he could have been. Uh, all he's got to do is win. I mean, I'll say all he's got to do. But if he if he could have won a Super Bowl, then he's in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he, if he went to Super Bowl, I've always said this. Tony Romo would have been considered one of the best quarterbacks in the game, if not the best. It only took one for people to think that about Rodgers. At one time, people thought that maybe about Breeze. He would have been the same, especially the way he played, the way he, you know. So I would have loved to have seen a few more years out of Tony. Um, but obviously, you know, it, you know, with Dak, it, they, that we wouldn't have been able to see him the same way. Um, I'm sure that's a good question. Maybe if it, you know, maybe maybe that's one we can take over into next week or so. I, I'd like to see other people, you know, back in the '70s or something like that. Um, you know, that there, there might be some some other answers of, of guys that I, I can't really recall. The injuries sort of, you know, hurt their career. They didn't. They didn't. They weren't the same for a Hall of Fame level type guy. Um, you know, Dez just kind of. You know, he just kind of wore down a little bit more than anything. Let me get another uh, text question in here. This is from um, uh, this is from Zach in Atlanta. He says, "I think Zimmer can develop Sam Williams and Mozzie Smith, which will help tremendously. Those two pieces can offset the departures we've had." It's old Cowboys, Brady James, any stories or memories? Um, let's go back. Uh, Sam Williams and Mozzie Smith. I mean. Yeah, that's the goal. I mean, this is a third year for Sam Williams. He needs to be developed. I think Dan Quinn could have done that as well. Uh, again, I, I kind of mentioned it already in the show what I think Sam Williams needs to do to, to get better. Um, he's got the tools. I mean, and he had the tools at Ole Miss. I mean, he he, he had the tools. Uh, he's just got to kind of put it together and and make, you know, make being a great football player number one. I mean, this has got to be number one for him um, to, to, be, to being a great football player, not just to be out there but, but to, to be a really great player. And that's just maturity, and that's all players. I mean, number 11, Micah Parsons, same thing. I mean, he, he is a great player, but he still he can mature in, in other ways. We all can, you know. I mean, I'm, on the, you know, I'm a little south of 50. I can mature too, you know. Uh, I mean, sometimes a lot of ways I, I could do that. But um, we all can. This is not a knock on anyone. This is just how they take it to the next level. This is, how, this is what needs to happen for them to get better. Because in some players – They've got all, all the things you need, you know, physically. They just need to kind of figure it out. We just said that about Romo. I mean, Romo, he kind of figured it out mentally, um, and it just it just didn't really correlate with uh, what his body was telling him at the same time. Um, all right, let's go. Is Travis in San Antonio is next? 
Nick, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing. Uh, I've got uh, apparently a better internet situation than you guys have going on, which is yeah, it's unfortunate. But I, I told Chris, I said, I know you guys are pros. You'll work through it. We are. This is in the middle of of, of working through it. So uh, and yep. I, I appreciate the call. Um, appreciate all the calls, but even today, more than anything, we need these calls to come through to make this show happen, and that hopefully it won't sound or look like anything's different, even though it is on the back end. There you go. Thanks. What do you well, got? I, I just wanted. I know we talked uh, on Tuesday, and I know you gave uh, kind of your answer on like how you would do things different. And I guess the only thing I'll, I just wanted to clarify, like the the reason I'm thinking outside the box on some stuff is just because it's kind of like sometimes when Brian brought us talks about draft stuff, he's like, he'll give who he thinks or like who he would draft and right. then who he thinks the Cowboys would draft. And I guess I can't, I, I kind of come from a spot of like, I think they've told us, you know, this is how they're going to go about things based on, like I said, if you're not going to be a big time player in free agency and it hasn't, like you said, if they haven't changed it, even though maybe it should, they haven't changed it. So this is what you got. So I guess I just want to clear, like, that's kind of where I come from. I'm like, if you're not going to go that route, then we got then you got to like pivot to something. Right. Um, and I was listening to 105 through the fan, so like I'm not gonna I'm gonna give them credit because I think it was Gavin that was talking about um, an interesting concept as far as like he thinks like sometimes the way he thinks like Steven and Jerry look at this is it's kind of like a portfolio where they're gonna invest in their own and it's, you know you're gonna keep your portfolio healthy and you're gonna kind of live off the dividends. But you never actually. There's never like a, you know, you know how when you set up a like a 401k, you can do aggressive uh, investing. You can do kind of like you know passive. Um, and we've never really been. There hasn't been that shift yet to the aggressive change. And I guess this is this is the first off season, Nick. Like obviously, I'm a hardcore fan because I'm calling in, and mm-hmm. you, you kind of mentioned that. But this is the first off season where I do. Again, and not to belabor the point, but the whole all-in thing, I think for some fans and even for me, it was a little bit patronizing because I know, like, when we say all-in, I know Stephen Jones knows what we mean. Like, because he's commented on what the Rams did and he, he congratulated them. Like, yeah, you know, they did what they did. They got a championship. And so he, so it's not like they don't know what we're talking about. So I think when they say all in, it's just kind of like some fans are like, then why are you saying it like that? Then, like well, Jerry, just, hold on now, and and, and I and when we hang up here, I've got a text question here that I'm going to address about all in as well. But yep. but but we need to stop saying they said it. They didn't say all in. Stephen did not say that. Jerry said it. Jerry answered the question, and I'll I'll get into the exact answer. I'm gonna I'm gonna break down the all in comment one more time, but. I, you're right. I mean, Stephen knows what all in it means. That's why he didn't say it. But um, but he did sort of say it because he said he said like our version. He said right. our version of it in the clip that I saw him say. He said our version of it is yeah. keeping our core, our core intact. Right. Right. So that's without saying maybe without actually saying it. Like that's a sneakier way of saying it. But he's saying like this is our version of all in. But you know what I'm saying like there's a different version of that like. I right, think that's just it, where it, it goes from. back to what I said before about a kid that, that, that doesn't appreciate the 12 toys that he already has. You know, and he just wants the new one. So no one's going to get that excited when you say, guess what? They re-signed Micah Parsons or they re-signed Dak or they re-signed CD. You're not going to get that excited. You're going to be like, what took so long? How much did he get? Cool. But you're not like, oh, my God, thank you. Because you don't expect them to leave. But the reality is, is that, you know, they could have got C.D. Lamb at $24, $25 million maybe before the season started. Now he's going to be maybe a $30 right. million dollar player. That, that, that happens. But you, but you may not get the excited part of it, which I understand your point on that, but you also won't get the, like, the pissed off portion either. Like it's right. just being straight. It's just being straight with people. If you just be straight and just say, "Hey, this is our strategy," I understand some people might not like it, but okay. this is what we this is what we believe in. That would right, be a better sir. answer. All right, all right. I appreciate the call, Travis. Yep. Um and, and I'm gonna have a good one. You too. All right. Let me go to this next this question here. This was from um, Tom and Norman, uh, Norman, Oklahoma. I assume Tom. He says, "Can you address this part of Jerry Jones' all in quote? He said, we will push the hell out of it." It will be going all in on different people than you've done in the past. We will be going all in. 
I don't know where that quote's from. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure where that quote is from. I haven't seen that one. Um, that 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 sounds a lot more aggressive. I'm not, I've never seen that quote. Well, the quote that I've seen that came out of uh, the Senior Bowl was a question that was that, that said, "Will you guys? Is this an all-in type of season?" And Jerry's response is, "I would anticipate with." With looking ahead to the key contracts we'd like to address, we'll be all in. We will be all in, is what he says. I would anticipate we'll be all in at the end of this year. So that's the quote. I don't really know this other quote. So, um, th- so we'll be all in. I, you know, I've said this before. I, I really feel like. You know, with with the one year deals that they have, with the money that they're getting tied in, with, with the the cloudy future that's ahead of Dak, this is kind of it. I mean, this is this is the one where the window's closing, and this is this is the one that they feel like the chips have been pushed in. Now they're waiting on the cards. That's what this season is about. That's not what the way the fans took it. The fans took it that they're going to be trading for top players. They're going to be, you know maybe moving next year's one and moving up in the draft and getting, you know, that's the way they took it. And uh, I think, I think the Cowboys have always approached it as, you know, this is all in for us. You know, we, we've been all in for two or three years now, you know, two or three years of, of, of pushing these contracts like this. So um, it's, it's unfortunate that, that, that we're still talking about it, but you know, cause that fans are not really going to drop it. Um, that's that's the that's the reality of it. That's the version of all in that they have. All right, Jeff in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hey, Nick. Good afternoon. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, I just wanted to uh, chat with you a little bit. Um, I like to. I like how Brian always gives you an old player. Yeah. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to talk to you, or I wanted to ask you if you remember Derek Ross. I'm a big Ohio State fan, yeah. so yeah. I remember him coming out, and I thought he was going to be a great player, but he flamed out pretty quick, and I can't remember why. I, I don't remember if that was a Parcells cut, uh, no. so I just wanted your uh, – Well, Parcells – If you remember that. I'll, yeah, I'll say this about Parcells. He <laughs> – you know, he, he had a different terminology on a lot of players, and you might be surprised by this, but he calls he called Derek Ross cute. He said he's a, he's a cute <laughs> player. Uh, I do remember that. I just think he liked, you know, he just he, he liked the tattoos. He liked his hair, you know. He like he just liked the way his, his, his personality. He had he was kind of, you know, he joked a lot, a little bit. It just it just his demeanor. He was on him all the time, you know. He was on him. Right. Um, Derek Ross is probably one of those guys who would be in the top, you know, one hundred of just straight talent, you know. But, right. But. And, and I don't remember all of it either. Um, you know, I don't remember kind of why it didn't always work out. But, um, yeah, he had a kickoff return for a touchdown to start the game. They got called back for a penalty. Um, I think right. it was against Washington. He played He played it, two or three years, right, Derek Ross? Yeah, if I remember correctly, he was a third-round pick. And I know he got in uh, late in the season, uh, maybe a veteran got hurt, but I can't really remember. I thought he was super talented. And then next thing you know, he was gone. So yeah. I figured that was just a Parcells thing, but, um, no, I but, wanted to ask but, but you I'll a say this though. Parcells liked him. Parcells gave him a chance. Oh. I mean, he, he definitely awesome. gave him, gave him a chance to play. Uh, he just, Fantastic. Uh, yeah, he, he, he really liked Derek Ross. And, and I think he got five picks his first year. Um, right. And now, now Derek Ross was, was a draft pick in, in Campos last year, 0-2. Uh, so he, right. you're right. You're right, third-round pick. I, I want to say he played three or four seasons, you know? Um, and, so, anyways. And you're probably right. That was just kind of on my mind. But I called you Tuesday for the first time, and I kind of wanted to uh, come back to a little bit about my question. This one's more – and I know just listening to you beforehand uh, talking about the all-in thing, I'm one of those fans that I, I still kind of can't tend to get over that. I thought when Jerry said that, I was like, well, maybe this is the year. Um, and you talk about his version of all-in maybe extending, you know, our superstar players that we have, Dak, Micah, CD. Um, I guess my question is, and more of a player's perspective, um, we've heard Micah, you know, make comments on his podcast or in the media how, you know, oh, that, or we see him react to like signings in Philly or other teams. 
Um, with his perspective, Dak's perspective, you know, CD, the way that how competitive they are, and if you were looking from their eyes on kind of what's taken place this offseason, all the players that we've lost, not really having any come in, and I know we're still into free agency, we got the draft. Do you think – do you think in their minds they could kind of be down on potentially wanting to re-sign here? Like, for example, if you look at CD, Dak could be gone next year. I hope he's not. I'm a Dak supporter. But as a wide receiver, you want to play where you know that you have a pretty stable quarterback situation. So do you think what's taking place this offseason, maybe a soft rebuild, could potentially – affect these guys on wanting to resign here and i know in the nfl if they want if your team wants to keep you they're going to keep you with the fifth year option and the uh the franchise tag i just wanted your thoughts on that uh maybe from a player's perspective uh just something that i've been kind of thinking about yeah um over the past couple days Well, you know jeff this comes down to just you know when you when someone hands you a piece of birthday cake do you eat it you know do you take it i do and you eat it and that's it i (laughs) mean you, I, I would love to see the other side of the coin and to see the faces of the people up there, you know, that do the contracts. If they said, you know what, we don't really like all the stuff that you guys have been doing or not doing in free agency. We don't really want to resign here. All the while knowing that the reason why that they're trying to push all this money that they've got to next year is also because they know they've got three huge contracts to sign. So what would it take? I mean, man. If, if CD and Micah were like, you know, we really don't like what's going on here. Well, you want to go down to you want to go down to 20 million a year or, or you want right. to be the top, top paid player? I mean, that's that's my point is that the reason why they're not doing a lot is because of these contracts that they know they have to do. Don't hold them against them. The fact that they, you know, they haven't done that. You know what I'm saying? That, no, no, I completely understand. So I, I don't think they it. would they would think that way. I think it would be it would be a quick conversation. Like, why are we signing anyone? Because we're trying to give you thirty one million a year. Oh, all right, right, all right. Well, right. Thanks. See you later. I'm gonna go work out. I mean, what else can you do and say? I mean, um, I don't think they would do that. Well, and like, but and then, and then like you said, you know, in regards to the front office, you know, CD is probably going to be one of the top three wide receivers paid. Micah potentially is going to be the top defensive player yeah. paid in the NFL. So I completely understand on 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 that portion. I Just kind of a little thinking outside the box. I appreciate your perspective on yeah, that. I mean, and it, it makes complete sense. I, I think I, – I, I know what you're saying is, is that what what are we looking like here? I mean, because is this is this going to be a down year? Is this going – you know, are, are, right. what, what, what's, what happens next? But – I mean, if that's the case, I mean, how do the Lions ever sign anyone? How does the, how do the right. Texans ever sign? How do the Jaguars sign people? I'm talking about teams that traditionally just haven't had a lot of success. Money talks right. a lot, and it's loud. So they and, and I guess yeah, I guess from what I'm what I'm seeing, you know, like Dak, one of the most competitive quarterbacks in the NFL. Mike is a competitive freak. CD is a competitive freak. Yeah, I just. I just want to know, and I know you can't answer for them. Just like, what what are they thinking about seeing? You know, all this all this turnover within the organization. So yeah, um, just you know, you know, I understand I, what you're saying though. But but I think I think they they look at it like, all right, Sam Williams, let's go. You know, we lost Doran Armstrong, Sam Williams. I mean, Dak probably looks at Brock Hoffman and says, "There's no reason you can't let's be go. the guy. You let's go, T.J. Bass." Right. You know, if they right. draft someone, they draft someone. I mean, and I'm Jalen Tolbert for I, for Gallup. Right, right. And I'm the internal optimist. I'm a lot like Jerry. I always think, no matter how many free agents or draft picks don't hit, they can always win. And they've shown us that the last three years. Yeah. That if they stay healthy, they can win games. So yeah. I guess we'll just see how the rest of the off season plays out and see what they do. So thanks, Nick, for taking All my right. call. I appreciate right. it. No problem. All right, Jeff, appreciate that. Let me go to another text question here. Um, he said, this is, this is this is from Brent from Ingleside, Texas. He says, about left tackle, Mark Tuane, Flozell Adams, Tyron Smith. Tui's first year left tackle was 86. Then he had Flozell and Tyron until 2004. That's almost 40 years of pretty dang good left tackle play. And other than a couple of years of Phil Paz Derrick, you had Pat Donovan, an all-pro before that, Ralph Neely, another offer. 
They have a rich left tackle history. Yeah, I was waiting for a question. Uh, that is interesting. I mean, when you think of it from that standpoint, I mean, that you usually – you usually have I and mean, that's a that's a big spot you know i mean uh, it certainly is and so um you know th they'll get another they'll probably draft one they may draft one in the first round and if it just doesn't work out where they don't they don't maybe they get a trade offer that's just too good to pass up or maybe there's a player you know cd lamb type of player that you're just like man this is yeah we can reach on this left tackle and that's a question for you guys say they need to get a starting left tackle and they're sitting here at, at, at 20, you know, I guess they're at 24. And they're sitting there and they have an opportunity to take a, a tackle that they have a second round grade on. Uh, he probably can come in and, and, and be a starter at some point. Or they can take this dynamic wide receiver or cornerback that they have in their top 12. And they think is going to be an outstanding player. Well, I mean, what would you do? You stick to the board or do you go off of, off of need? And so... Uh, that's that could happen. I mean, it probably will happen, especially when you're looking at the way the draft is going to be. I think they're going to have more needs going into the draft than, than we've seen in a while. And this is what it looks right now. I don't see a lot of things changing here in the next few weeks from free agent standpoint. So, I, I you know, unfortunately, they couldn't put as many Band-Aids on these positions. I mean, you don't have really a starting running back, and you don't have a center and at least, at least that you have, you know, that you feel comfortable about. You know, Rico Dowdle obviously could could do it. Hoffman could do it, but at what level? So, all right, let's go to the next caller. Is Wilson? He's in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Wilson. Hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing? How you doing, man? I'm good. Good, good. Yeah, just got off work. Um, just thought I'd give you a try. It was first time um, calling, period, and first few rings, and Chris what? answered. So that was kind of surprising. So yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah, this is kind yeah. of a different show. This is the show for first-time callers. Love it. What do you got, Will? Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, so um, first I just wanted to kind of mention I've been a fan for a long time. Um, and uh, the first time I ever listened to DallasCowboys.com, I remember I was on my desktop computer when uh, I remember Terrence Newman getting drafted. And oh. uh, okay. me, me, just going to, me just going to the website and just hearing you guys talk about it. I don't know if it was you. I can't remember who it was back then. but I would hope um, so. I mean, I, I would hope that I was doing that 21 years ago. I can't imagine that many people – uh, else doing it. So yeah. Twenty yeah, two. Yeah, I, I was really excited. I was really excited to like finally be able to like get in touch with the Cowboys in that kind of a way when I, you know, discovered you guys on the internet. So sure. uh, anyways, but yeah, I've been listening to you guys ever since. Um I wanted to talk about Mike Zimmer real quick. Uh sure. so typically when we hire like coordinators in general, just every team in general, like it's usually a present and a future kind of a signing. But with him just doing a one year deal do you think he's going to have kind of a different approach coaching the defense? Will he be, do you think, more aggressive? Will he kind of play this? I mean, I guess he's always kind of been aggressive, but, like, I don't really know. Like, I don't really know what to expect out of a out of a coach who doesn't really know his future. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think if you were to play uh, just a regular game of checkers with Mike Zimmer right here in, in March, I think he's going to try to win. I think he's going to slam it down and be like, king me. You know, I think he's I think he's like that. And that's checkers that don't mean anything. So I think a, a one-year deal, a 10-year deal, it doesn't matter. I think he's an aggressive coach that's going to try to get after the quarterback's ass. That's what I believe is going to happen. And so I, right. don't think, I really don't think any of that stuff matters uh, to him. He's trying to get back in the NFL, trying to prove he had some, you know, he, he's, he had some personal um, issues with his family. He went through a lot of stuff. I think he's back. It's all about football right now. I don't think it mattered if the contract said five years or one year or a month. I think he's going to give you everything he's got. That's Zimmer. That's who the guy he's always been. And so I don't think that really matters in this case. The question's not wrong for other people, but for Mike Zimmer and how he's built, I think I, I don't think the length of the contract matters. I think you're going to get an aggressive play-calling defensive coach. Great. And do you think he's going to use our players – um, kind of like how Quinn did with like um, uh, to each player's specialty, you know, like not trying to change each player's game up too much, doing what works best for them, what they're good at. Do you think he's that type of coach as well? I think he could be, but I think he's a little bit more of a, of a, this is the system. I mean, now now he's he's done some three four four three. He's done that kind of stuff. Um, I I hope not. I hope it's not. You know, I. 
and, and, and I'll and I'll say this. I think I think where you're gonna see a difference between Zimmer and and Dan Quinn is at linebacker. Okay? Because he I think the type of linebackers that we've seen that get passed over are the ones maybe a little bit older, they've lost a step or two, they're still a good tackler, but they don't cover the pass as much. Well, that's what Kendricks is that guy. You know, and the Cowboys have kind of been looking at safeties to play this role. They get excited about linebackers that are undersized on third and eight. They can go cover the tight end. But the problem is on first down, they get blown up by the guard that hits the second level. I don't think Eric Kendricks is going to get knocked off the ball a lot like that. So uh, that's the biggest difference that I see so far without watching a practice is that the type of linebackers that Zimmer likes in his scheme and Quinn in his scheme is going to be a little bit different. All right. All right. Love to hear it. Thanks, man. Appreciate All right, Wilson, it. Thanks for the call. Call back uh, again. Be de- definitely want to hear you uh, from you in Virginia Beach, Virginia. A lot of Cowboy fans over there for sure. A lot of Cowboy fans in Germany. Uh, Zach in Germany. What's up? Hey, Nick. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Good, good. Sorry. I've been trying to call in the past couple of days, but uh, my timing was off. So That's okay. apologize about it's that. Okay. Well, we I should, appreciate I you. Should, yeah, no problem. I should be saying it's uh, it's, it's Zach from the practice squad. I didn't make the cut, but we're still on the teams. So yeah, got uh, next year. Yeah, that's okay. You know, we need we need uh, we definitely. I mean, you still got to have a roster for sure. So that's you know, right. With roster, practice squad, and there's always always next year uh, for sure. Now, I did put hey. Reggie from Germany. Um, I know. I got I got to beat out Reggie now. Well, I got a new goal for myself. You know, I mean, and that's that's the thing, like. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't actually have a math formula to it, but I mean, six calls from Germany, you know, th- that that equaled at least like ten to twelve from you know just regular calls. Um, so I gave a little more leeway to the people that called, you know, regularly, you know, re- regular callers from out of the country. We we've had two no, on I, this show. Oh, okay. I, I'm not listening live, uh, unfortunately. So I usually have to listen the following day. Um, yeah. Actually, I guess while we're on this subject, do you know how many callers you've had from outside the country? Yes, I okay. do know. Okay, that's good. But but, uh, gonna, but, oh, but I don't have the spreadsheet in front of me. Uh, I no, would no worries. I would guess um, outside of the, the different callers from outside the country, I would guess fifteen to twenty. You know, okay, that's different, good. Different some good numbers. Man. Yeah, may, maybe about twenty. Yeah. So, anyways. Cool. I'll try to keep. Um, keep I'll try to keep Ali on his toes. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Ali, do some traveling. Ali, yeah, he moves around, so you know he, he's kind of tough. But uh, all right, what what do you got, Zach? Yeah, no problem. A um, couple things. So the, the first one is really when you look at the free agency and the draft and building a team, three sixty five process. The I think the issue I have and, and many fans have is sometimes the approach the Cowboys take is almost like not rostering or playing one element of your game, right? So you have an offensive, defense, and special teams. If we don't participate and try to get, truly try to get better in free agency, bringing in some guys, and I get this year, Cap, things like that, but, I mean, this has been a, a rhythm with the Cowboys where we sit out the first two weeks, we sign some backup players, and we draft well. But when you look at other teams that are focused on bringing in free agent talent, good free agent talent, those teams also have draft picks just like us. And what's happened, I think, is in some instances when we don't address free agency properly and maybe bring in a big name here and there, you go into the draft and now you're going to pigeonhole yourself. And I'll use this year's draft, our offensive line, two key positions, probably the two most important positions on the offensive line, your center and your left tackle, are both needs. And now what's going to happen, since we pick later, we tend to pick anywhere between pick 18 and and the back half, you know, you're going to have teams that are going to jump in front of us because they know the Cowboys have to take these one or two positions. Last year, it happened with Dalton Kincaid. It's happened in the past where teams will jump in front of us because they know, hey, the Cowboys have to to go after this pick. So I wanted to hear your response on that. Uh, Before I hang up, one one other comment. Um, Since it's draft season, do you have any former draft draft picks that you wish the Cowboys made? So, for example, I'll use – Obviously, everybody was going to use Taco and, and T.J. Watt. That's a big one. But way back in the day, instead of taking Julius Julius Jones, I wish we would have taken Stephen Jackson. Uh, see what your thoughts are. And I'll hang up with this. Um, with Stephen, yeah, Stephen Jackson. 
That was 2004. Um, you know, the thing about that is that pick, by not taking a pick right there, um, they took, they got another pick in 2005. They ended up taking Marcus Spears uh, for that with that second pick there. Um, yeah, I mean, he could go, he could go on and on. I mean, I, I definitely remember wanting them to take uh, Devin Hester. I, I was I was thinking that that would be a difference maker type pick. I can't remember exactly the player that they took instead. But you know what? I'm wrong sometimes too, because I did not like the Demarcus Ware pick. I thought Derek Johnson would have been a way better pick. He was a linebacker at Texas. Uh, he had a decent career. I think he had some injuries. He's not in the Hall of Fame. I know that. And so, um, you know, that's maybe one of the first times I realized that you know, let me just kind of talk about it and let y'all. Y'all do the drafting, you know. Now, I I definitely remember the day before the draft saying the guy I would take, I would not take one of these corners. I would take Micah Parsons. I I I, I said that. I definitely thought Micah Parsons would have was the best player to take um, at the eighth pick. Or is, I think that's where they were, or they were the, the tenth pick that moved to twelfth. Um, so you know, sometimes you just have a feel for it, and you have a feel for. You know what? You know, and sometimes just by looking at the tape, you know, we we watch YouTube highlights. You don't always see the bad tape; you just see the tape. So, you know, it, it's tough. To, these guys that are grading these players, they they've done it for two years now. You know, they've looked at them sophomore, junior, you know, if senior, if they go into the senior year. So they've been looking at them for two or three years. They they have a much better idea than than any of us that just watch a few highlights here and there. Um, and as for the approach, I mean, it it, it is what it is. I mean, like. You know, this 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 approach is, you know, the Cowboys have a lot of good players. They've drafted well. They're good players. They, they, they demand a lot of money. And that's kind of been their, what, what they do is they, they re-sign their own guys. And they try to keep, you know, facilitating the roster by drafting other good players. I think that if you're going to have a lot of money in free agency is, you know, you're, you're probably – missing on a lot more of these draft picks than I think the Cowboys have. And that's that's the issue. The Cowboys ha are drafting well. Uh, they, they didn't so much last year, but I, they have in the last 15 years. And so that's kind of – when they get to free agency, they're like, what well, we don't we don't want to overpay for this guy that you don't even want either. So uh, we're going to keep doing it through the draft. And so it's just that month of March that frustrates the fans because it looks like they're not doing anything but signing their own guys. And, you know, that's that's the way it is. All right, I think we are out of callers. Uh, phone line is 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 open uh, at the time right now, 888-855-2297. And I think I've read all of my, my questions as well. Chris, are you with me? I am. Open line right now? Yes, sir. It's been one of those days, man. It's been one of those, like, two days, I think, back in the, in the back uh back there just trying to to piece all this together so um but uh yeah jeff and oregon had a question and do you want to take that one he's in between oh okay uh yeah there Did it you is want that one there it is jeff and oregon text question yeah kind of got sandwiched in between these other two big questions all right uh actually no i don't want to take you don't want to take that one okay i just want to make sure i was gonna let you I'll read, it, read first. it oh man that's like everybody wants to do this i know but i think it's a Dumb they, idea. Okay, that's what Chris's opinion it's on a this dumb topic. Idea. They should trade Micah Parsons. We need the draft capital. It would get us a real, it would get us a real defensive end, and much more this year and next. What do you think? Okay, I, what is this? It would get us a real defensive end. I mean, what what do you, what do you want? Like a real de like like Dante Fowler? You want like a real defensive end? You know, or an Armstrong, or even a Sam Williams? If he's that, I mean, like. You don't like this hybrid, maybe he's a linebacker, maybe part-time linebacker, part-time in, always a badass, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't know about that. Okay, but from a business standpoint, you know, guys get traded. I mean, Khalil Mack got traded a couple years ago. He got a lot for him. I mean, guys get traded for a lot of picks, and and that's what the Cowboys are have to decide if that's, if that's the, the most important thing, to get draft capital – to not have to pay that big contract. See, that's that right there goes back to to the caller before that says, why don't we have money in free agency? You know, they're drafting too. What the problem is is that well, it's not really a problem. It's just a strategy. Some people are 
getting rid of some certain players before they have to really pay them. Uh, they don't want those big contracts. They don't want to have to give out that kind of, you know, actual money. And I, that's not Ben Jerry's approach. Jerry thinks if he's got a guy like Micah Parsons, you need to keep him. And uh, so that's why I don't see him being traded. I don't, I don't, I don't remember the last time the Cowboys have really done that. I mean, you can make the case, you can make the case for Amari Cooper, but Amari was not really young. I mean, he was still kind of in the middle of his career, and and you know that was one that, and they didn't get a lot for him either. Uh, they got a fifth round pick. So, but you know, as far as trading someone early before a really big contract like that, basically just giving up on him. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that way. I mean, you don't usually go into the NFL and just dominate. You know, that just doesn't really happen. You don't see a lot of first-team All-Pro as a rookie. Um, what you do see a lot of are guys at any level, at any sport, at any job that come into their profession at 21 or 22, 23, and they think they've got it, got it all figured out. You know, they, they're, they're good, and they know it, and they've got it figured out. And they get humbled a little bit, and they kind of understand, you know, how to act with, around others and how to sort of grow up a little bit. And, and, and there's a way to do this and do it well and also get along with everyone. That happens a lot in a lot of different jobs, in a lot of different areas and, and spaces. And so if you take the player that can dominate early – and also the fact of maybe a guy that's going to grow up a little bit more. What kind of combination could you have there? And, and so what I'm really getting at here is that it it's a lot. I think it's it's a lot more common to have a player that grows up right in front of you and can and can maybe not be as annoying as as he is to certain fans. It's easier to find that person and for that to happen than to draft a guy that's dominating the NFL in year one. So you want your draft capital? Sure. Go, trade him for draft capital. Try to, try to duplicate that as well. I, I don't think Micah Parsons is a lost cause. I think his mentality is one where, you know, he, he's, he's arrogant. He's very confident in what he can do, and he should be. He's been really good from the start. I think he'll continue to grow in that area, coupled with the fact that I think he'll, he'll grow as a player as well. I'd rather have that guy uh, for sure. So, all right. Oh, by the way, for your Devin Hester question. Yeah. Uh, Cowboys picked um, Anthony Fasano three picks ahead of him. Tight end. Yeah. That was the Bobby Carpenter draft, 2006. Yeah. So, Carpenter in the first round, Fasano in the second, and then Hester went 57th overall. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, I think, yeah, 57th overall to Chicago. Cowboys 53 got Fasano see, tight end out of Notre see, Dame. That's not gonna that wasn't gonna happen for a couple of reasons. Um, yeah, it's easy to look back at this now and be like, yeah, Hester, you know, uh, he's gold jacket guy. Bill Parcells is not gonna draft Devin Hester as a kick returner uh, in the second round of a draft, especially when he can take. Anthony Fasano, and he probably misspelled his name and spelled it uh, Bavaro because that's what he was hoping he was going to get was a tight end named Mark Bavaro, who he had and was awesome for him with the Giants. And he probably was just – and truth be told, and I know this, he was hoping that Bobby Carpenter was his dad, Rob Carpenter, you know, and, and, and he compared that that way. It was funny because – Jason Garrett, as the head coach for 10 years, was like, I don't compare players. You know, we don't compare players. I don't compare anything. Never compared a player. Well, he's, this guy's sort of like him. He's like, I don't compare players. Parcells compared everyone. To, to, he was like, that guy is going to be like this guy. And, you know, until the media did it. And then when the media did it and they said, you think DeMarcus Ware is like Lawrence Taylor? He's like, listen, fellas, listen, no. No, he's not. Now, let's just put him in Canton right now. Well, we didn't put him in Canton right then, but when that, 15 years later they did. So it looked like it was a good a good pick. The funny thing about that that draft, by the way, Nick, yep. I went back down Cowboys picks. In the fourth round, 125 overall. Skyler he, Green. Skyler, you're right. Skyler Green. and, and Dra they, he, they wanted him to be like a kick returner. A kick returner. Yep. Yep. Skyler Green. 
LSU. Yeah, that's right. And he was small. I remember him. He was tiny. Yeah. I don't remember him actually making the team. But, I, I mean, I think he did. He, he might have made the team, but he really didn't contribute much at all. So, yeah, that 06 draft is not going to win awards for the best one. This is Parcells' last draft. Carpenter, Fasano, Jason Hatcher, Skyler Green, Pat Watkins, Montavia Stanley, Pat McQuiston. I mean, I mean, Jason Hatcher made a Pro Bowl. Um, that's about that's about it though from that 06 draft. So that was that was Bill's last one. They followed up. You know, we did a documentary on the 05 class. We will not be doing one on the 06 class. I can just tell you that right now. And All by right. the way, the Derek Ross situation when you were talking about yeah, earlier, two years. I mean. It was it, he was here for two years. The <laughs> Wikipedia is funny. It says he was released after. He missed a team session and a mandatory uh, charity-related hospital visit. Mm. That's what I said. Yeah, don't be missing the hospital visits. And then... Can't be doing that. The New Orleans claimed him like a year later off of waivers after Atlanta released him. And he was... He was... The wave was pulled the next day because he missed the flight to New Orleans. Mm. Okay. I mean, I think there's been a lot of people missing their flight out of New Orleans. I, mean, <laughs> I was going to say the same. You that, never miss it to New yeah, Orleans. Yeah, you know, usually, you, usually you'll drive yourself to, to New Orleans, <laughs> so but yeah, true. you don't miss it going out. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. All right, I, I see a theme happening there with Derek Ross's career. Um, you know, miss, he was missing some things, but um, you know, talented player, and he went and drafted in the third round. He was a really good player at Ohio State. I think they won the national championship the year before. Um, um, they were always competing for it. So a uh, really great player on that team for him to go in the third round. There was obviously some character issues or any kind of concerns and they ended up kind of playing out in his career. So, um, but yeah, I love the, the blast from the past uh, guys like that. So, all right, well, this has been a, uh, this has been a show for, for sure. Um, we've had to piece this one together. Appreciate the fans calling in. Uh, it will definitely, you'll, you'll be definitely be seeing it on the, um, on all of our platforms later on today. So uh, I want to thank uh, Chris Beam for doing a lot of work to kind of get this happen. We'll be hopefully back to normal next Tuesday, and uh, we'll have a, a live show uh, next Tuesday for sure. So for Chris, I'm Nick Eatman. We'll see you next week on Cowboy Storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?